Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. And let's talk about the digital audio sweet spot. Did you know that your DAW, your recording or mixing software, actually has a sweet spot? A place where when you get the level or the signal, things sound their best, and the cumulative effect gives you the best, cleanest, most musical sound possible? Well, this is huge for all engineers in the digital domain, especially newer engineers who are looking to older engineers or textbooks or schooling that taught us how to record and mix in the analog world, meaning on a console to tape, that kind of thing, as opposed to recording into a computer. Some of the old adages do not carry over to the digital world. And one of those that I talk about frequently is the old rule of record as hot as you can without clipping. What that would mean is, if you're looking at a track or a meter here, when recording, they would say record it so you see the signal all the way up here to the top, but make sure you don't hit that red clip light. As long as you're getting as much signal as possible without hitting that clip light, then that's what you want to do. That was true at one point in time, and that is true if you record analog. That is not true, nor is it helpful for digital recording and mixing. It's actually very harmful. And I want to give you two reasons why. And then I want to show you how to apply this to your tracks. If you have already recorded them, you can still use this technique and still get to the audio sweet spot in your digital domain after the fact. Here's the deal. Back in the day when you recorded, you had noise to deal with. The tape made noise. The console made noise. And so your goal was to get your signal above that noise as, as much as you could so that you would hear mostly the signal of what you're recording and not the tape hiss and the console hum and all that junk. At the same time, if you clipped or if you saturated or pushed the input a little bit on your console or your tape, it actually sounded pleasing. Analog distortion sounds good. Just think of a, a guitar amp. Very different than digital distortion. When you hit this clip light, it just, it's gone. And sometimes it can be a useful sound. Most often it doesn't sound very good. So you don't wanna get close to clipping because you don't gain anything from getting that loud, okay? You're not getting above any noise. There is no noise. Your, your little interface and your software is virtually noiseless. These are wonderful pieces of equipment to use today. But where I'm getting at is in a mixing phase, if you have tracks that are too hot, they're, they're, they're peaking way up here and they're hovering, average volumes are really, really high up here near the top of the meter, you're actually not gonna get the best sound out of your plugins. Most plugins, are emulating an analog environment and they have a sweet spot at which signal sounds its best and you're gonna get the best sound of your plug. And this is where I wanna to go today. Uh, here's a little song we're working on. I drive all night waiting for a sign that may not ever come. I was born with a restless heart. And you're going to notice my meters hover around halfway up to about 75% of the way up for their average volume. And there is a reason why. There is a digital audio sweet spot and it is minus 18 dBFS for the average volume. What does that mean? Let me show you. If you're looking at, let's say, this meter here in Pro Tools, and all meters are spaced out differently, and all meters put their numbers in different places, so it's very important to know your software and look at your meters and look at the numbers, but these numbers tell you how loud the signal is, and they're measuring it in decibels, dB, full scale, FS, dBFS. You're going to see zero at the top, and you're going to see minus 60 in this case at the bottom. When your volume gets all the way up here to zero, that is, that is the end. That is now digital clipping. That is the ceiling, as it were. So every number is going to be measured in a minus below zero, right? Minus five would be here. Minus 10 would be here. Minus 15 and so on. In the analog world, if you have a compressor or you have a preamp, they usually have what are called VU meters, okay? These are those little needles that are bouncing around, and it measures loudness and signal in a different way than this digital way, dBFS, okay? And let me give you an example of one of those meters. There is a plug-in here that I use um, from Klanghelm called Vumpt, 
and it sort of emulates uh, just it's a VU meter. That's all it is. It's just a way to to look at um, level. This is more common on analog equipment, and it measures volume. You've got a zero also, minus one, two, three, all down to minus twenty. But this is very important. This zero here, zero dB VU on a VU meter is not the same as this zero here at the top of my meter in my DAW, zero dB FS, full scale. That's where I think people get a little confused. This is an entirely different beast. This zero on this meter is actually minus 18 dB. That's the way it's calibrated by default. So if the needle's touching zero here, this is saying the average volume of this track is hovering around minus 18, which over here on my acoustic track here would be right about here. Let's take a look. In real time, you can look at the same signal with a full scale meter and a VU meter, and you can look at how they look different, but they're measuring the same volume. You see that? That acoustic guitar was measuring zero dB up here on the VU meter. But again, that is saying the average volume isn't zero dB at the top. It's saying that's minus 18. And you could see the meter was hovering around here, the green. It would peak higher. So it's peaking at maybe minus seven, but its average volume is right around minus 18. So the first thing you have to understand is that zero up here, the zero that we always wanted to, to get our needles at in the analog world, that we wanted our preamp to be at zero, we wanted our compressors to be around zero. It was a way to ensure we would send the right amount of signal from device to device and know that we're hitting that sweet spot. That zero is not the same as up here. And what this can tell us if you reverse engineer this is that minus 18 dB and sometimes minus 16 or somewhere around there is generally where zero VU is. That's generally where our analog meters want to be hitting the sweet spot. So you just try to reverse engineer that in the digital world and say, look, I want my tracks signal wise before they go into plugins to be hovering around minus 18 dB full scale. Again, not peaking because if this is a good example here, it peaks much higher. At high, at high peaks at maybe minus seven. That's fine. But where is the average volume, which is measured in the green meters here in Pro Tools, or if you have a VU meter, then you can put it on and find what the average volume is. You can calibrate it to whatever you want, so minus 16, minus 10. But in this case, minus 18 is generally a sweet spot for most plugins. That means you know your audio is not too hot, certainly not too quiet, although there's no real way to be too quiet in the digital domain. You can always boost it. You know it's not going to be too hot and it's going to be a good level so that when it goes into a plug-in, like in this case an LA-2A, I'm sending a sweet spot signal into that plug-in and this plug-in will operate at a sweet spot. A lot of analog modeling plug-ins, whether it's you know compressors that are modeling all the famous compressors we love or channel strip plug-ins modeling an SSL or an API or whatever it is, Neve, a lot of these, you can read the manuals, read the plug-in manuals. It'll tell you many of these say operates uh, ideally at minus 16 or minus 18 dB average volume, RMS volume, okay? And that just reinforces the idea that before you start mixing, my friend, this is where I'm going, before you start throwing plugins around, you wanna make sure that the actual signal of your tracks isn't too hot. And if it is, then you can use something like clip-based gain where you could go over to, let's say this riff electric guitar was too hot, most of the time, like in Pro Tools here, there's a little meter, uh, excuse me, a little fader icon here that I can click and I can just pull the actual volume down. This is not the same as the fader in the mixer, not the same as these faders. This just controls volume output away from the track. But here I'm actually turning down the actual signal of the audio file before it hits plugins. 
So if my, my tracks are too hot, I can pull them down here at the clip-based level, get them to that sweet spot around minus 18 average volume, give or take. This is a rule of thumb. Do not go crazy technical on this. Do not obsess over this. This is the ballpark you want to be in. Then you know that you're going to have the optimal signal sending into your plugins. Your plugins will sound their best, and you'll have a more musical, more natural, best possible sound in your mix before you do any of your mix moves. Okay, so in review, very, very important. You don't want to record as hot as possible without clipping. And you certainly don't want to mix tracks that are that hot. You want your individual tracks to hover around minus 18 dB full scale, but for their average volume, not peaking at minus 18, but their RMS volume, average volume. You can get a VU meter and calibrate it to minus 18, or you can just look at the meters that your DAW gives you. You want to have that sweet spot, minus 18 dB for their average volume before you move on to any plugins. I promise you, you'll get a better sound. It sounds stupid, it sounds subtle, but this is part of the process of getting the optimal sound at every stage of the game, and your mixes will benefit from it. Now, before you go, I wanna give you something. Mixing, as you are hearing, is a technical process, and it, there's so much going on in mixing, but at the same time, it can be very simple. And at the very same time, your mix is only as good as your recording, which is only as good as your arrangement, which is only as good as your song. There are all of these elements that are critical to getting your final song to sound the way you want it to sound. In fact, there are six steps, six distinct steps that every song has to go through. We can get hung up on one of them, mastering, mixing, recording, but you're going to do that to the exclusion of the other five. You don't want to do that. If you want your music to sound its best, I want you to go through every step, and that's all six steps. And what I've done is I try to basically break that down for you into a guide. It's called my six steps to a radio-ready song guide. It's the way to get songs that sound so good that they could be on the radio. Whether you get played on the radio or not is really not the point, but that's the goal we're going for, right? We want songs that sound so good that are worthy of being on the radio. And there is a map. There is a formula. There is a process. And I outline that for you in this free guide. It's going to walk you through all six steps. It's going to explain what those are. It's going to give you practical industry standard tips for all six of those steps. And it'll be your roadmap every time you want to sit down and create a piece of music. I want to give this to you since you hung in there with me and watch this video as my gift to you to say thanks for being a watcher and a subscriber and a viewer. And you can get it at radioreadyguide.com. Real simple. Just download it right there. Print it out if you're old school like me. Have it on your desk where you mix or you can just have it on your phone or tablet, whatever you like. Call it up every time you're working on a song and you'll know what to do first, what to do second, third. It's all there at radioreadyguide.com. Grab your download and enjoy, my friend. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to these videos if you enjoy them. Give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate it. And I'll see you on a video real soon.